So I have an interesting piece that came to the shop which I'm about to work on and show you something very interesting on how to, uh, I'm going to improve on it, believe it or not. It's a Hans J. Wagner ottoman and um, what we're going to do is improve on the design, believe it or not, of the original design on the upholstery. But the other interesting part is um, the fabric is a Marameco fabric from Finland. So we have International Day here at Upholstery on Broadway, at Broadway Upholstery School. And so we have Finnish and Danish, uh, we, we're, we're marrying those two elements. So what we're going to do is the fabric for the Marameco is this up here. So what I had to do is always check you guys, if you, if, you, if you have a fabric that you're not sure of, go online and check it out. Uh, I found the fabric and I have the direction. Just wanted to make sure because there's some, there's a little doubt about the direction. So that's one of the reasons why I went on here. But look at that Merrimack has some beautiful fabric. So I'm just going to click on that and show you. So I determine what the, what the top is. Now on the ottoman it doesn't matter so much, but um, I have two other chairs that I'm doing. So um, it came to me all folded up. So what I did was uh, I got the top and rolled it the correct way, which I've shown you. And um, that's ready to go on the other two chairs. So let's go over to the, the table and show you how I'm gonna how I'm gonna do this. So here we are, Marameco fabric. This is the top right here. And uh, like I said, on the ottoman, it doesn't matter so much because uh, it flips around. But on my other two pieces, it is gonna matter. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna put this over here. Uh, the pattern is so big that um, I only have it centered and um, it's not going to be able to fit so I thought a little bit off centering would be would be good on this. I'm using my judgment. The customer said use your judgment which I'm going to. So I wanted to show you about these Hans Wagner. Um, they, they don't have cambric on them so uh, they're finished uh, right along the edge here with our stapling has to be folded. Um, if it, the whole idea of these is to see the bottom so the labeling on, on authentic mid-century furniture is so important. Um, and the reason this isn't covered is for people can see the labeling. So you really don't want to cover it. it. This doesn't get the traditional cambric on it whatsoever. I'm going to fold it nicely on, on, the, on, on the edges here. But really that's not what I'm going to show you on this video. I'm going to show you um, an e a better way of finishing the edges over here. I want to show you what they, what they did. Now I'm not sure if this was original, but it would be interesting to see. This is another Marameco. Uh, this is interesting from Stockholm. So this isn't a Marameco, unless they have a Stockholm office. They might. Actually, it does look like a Marameco. I haven't, I haven't done the research on this. <laughs> You'll, I'll probably get calls from people uh, uh, on comments on what this fabric is. But this is the old fabric. So what they did was um, they had this folded. I'll show you the edges. I don't know if you can see this, but they had a, uh, the piping, the old piping is not here. So I have a new piece of piping, which I'm going to use so shortly for something. Um, but that, that little piece of piping was put on for us. They put cardboard tack tape here, and, and then they hand stitched this on here. And I love hand stitching, but um, the hand stitching was all undone. And I don't think that took too long to do. So I'm going to do an improvement on this. And this is the improvement. So uh, we're not going to hand stitch it. I'm going to put this aside for now. What I'm going to do first, very first thing that you want to do is, believe it or not, is find a scrap piece of welt. I usually like to use a fairly, um, probably a medium upholstery fabric when I do this. And uh, I'm going to staple this on first, believe it or not. I am creating a little spot for my piping out of the Marameco to nestle in in between the piping that I put on and the edge of the wood and we're going to glue it in there and, and the profile of that is going to be perfectly even with this wood and off the fabric and over the welting which will never even fail but it's going to give you a nice little gully in there um, to put your piping so that said so what, I, what you want to do is it's a thin fabric so you're not going to be you're probably going to be about a quarter of an inch like, like that from the gap in here so I'm just going to sneak over here for a minute, and I'm going to I'm going to get a couple of staples, and then I'm going to pull this really tight, so that I get this nice and straight. Look at that. I'm going to hold this up to the camera in a minute. But if you pull that end tight, notice how I'm not even use, I'm not even using a, a, a mock or a, a tape measure to measure this. I just know that it's going to be beautiful. I'm really kind of excited about this piece. So I'm going to cut this right here. Some people might say that the, the hand stitch 
the hand stitching was a little bit endearing to this piece, but um, I, I, for practical purposes, I, I don't think it's going to last as long, and it didn't before. And uh, you see how fast I was? That staple was coming out this way, and I moved my finger just in time. It hit something on the bottom there. Let's uh, try to do that again. Move my thumb away that time. So see? So Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just, just for the benefit of this video, I'm not going to finish this whole thing because it's going to take too long. But what I'm going to do is pin staple uh, at that little gully that I showed you, that little lip on the bottom. And I'm going to pull this, this forward this way. And I'm going to get another staple in there, another staple in there, and another staple in there. So this is the part that I want to show you um, that I'm, I'm focused on in this piece, just to show you in this video. So let's say you've got it all secured front to back, and then you take, you take a folded piece of the fabric and give it a little tug. Now, only a little tug, because this is curved, so I'm not pulling this tight. The tighter you pull over a curve, the worse it becomes because you're going to wrinkle the fabric. It has the opposite effect. So all your stretch is going to come front to back on this. Okay, so when you come over here, you're going to stretch it. Just a little bit, you're folding it and stretching it, and then you're going to get a staple right in, right in there. Right along my little groove that I created. Okay, now, that's all I'm going to do for now, and I'm going to show you now what you do with your piping. So, the piping's underneath, you don't even feel it. The cotton really made a nice little transition there. It's, it's just nestled in there nicely. I know the piping's going to do the same. So, what we're going to do with the piping, Okay, so this is going to be a thinner piping, by the way, so keep that in mind. I'm just going to show you this for demonstration purposes. I don't have the piping made yet. So if you want to see more extended videos, um, more detail, I have an hour and a half, sometimes two hours on my online classes where I'm doing things like this while my apprentice is working on other projects. And they're, and they're taking their time. They're, we're showing you the full, the full videos. Um, full applications. So I trimmed up my, my welting to about um, you know an eighth of an inch or, or as close as you can get without ripping without having the stitches come undone. Okay, So you're going to have your hot glue gun plugged in. I'm going to move this up because it's so important. And then this is going to just be glued in and that's going to nestle beautifully right in there. Keep in mind this is the bigger welt so the smaller welt I, that's what I accommodated for. It's going to fit in there beautiful. So that's the tip. That's one of the best tips that you're going to get anywhere. Thanks. And that's it. stay tuned for other tips like that on the channel, on Broadway Upholstery School channel on YouTube, and also on the online classes. Like I said, you get much, much broader information, and those apprentices are asking the right questions. So we'll see you the next time. Thanks.